What's going on, Savage Life family? Today we're taking a look at Post Mark, and they recently IPO'd on January 14th of 2021 at $42 here, and jumped to an astonishing $82.81. So I'll go ahead and let you know what happened, what caused the spike, and what Post Mark is going to be looking like in the future. So Post Mark had its shares at 42. Wednesday evening up from a previous range of $35.39 that gave the company a valuation of $3.5 billion on a fully diluted basis. Almost triple the $1.25 billion it was valued at in 2019 when some of the company's existing investors sold shares in a secondary transaction. Of course, when a company IPOs, that's the best time for you to rake in those profits and uh and make your money because most of the time when companies IPO they are overvalued and overhyped and when the hype dies down they plummet. Uh, sad to say that Postmark IPO'd on a week of a terrible red week for the market which caused it to plummet a good $18.30, 18% as you can see there. But taking a look at this price point right here, $82, if you look at its competitor eBay, eBay is sitting at $55.40. Uh, you won't be able to see it here, but there was a time when eBay first opened up on the market and they started at roughly 90 to a dollar, 90 cents to a dollar on the market. And they made the climb all the way up to $55.40, which is astonishing. So I do believe eBay is undervalued at the current moment. Now, like eBay, it doesn't touch inventory. It lets buyers and sellers transact directly with each other which has allowed it to keep costs down and scale quickly which is honestly the best way to build an e-commerce it has attracted a large engaged following with 32 million active users who spent an average of 27 minutes a day on the shopping app in 2019. Uh, we all know what happened in 2020 and moreover in 2021 if you believe there's going to be less and less shopping going on then that may not be the case. The reason e-commerce are booming so much lately is because people don't want to risk getting sick going to stores physically and the inconvenience of driving. A lot of people like it, but a majority of the people, it's not the fact that they're lazy because sometimes I'm lazy and I don't want to drive anywhere. So I pretty much just order everything I want. It's the fact that you're just extremely busy these days. Now, the company generated revenue of $193 million in the nine months ended September 30th, up 28% from the previous year. It makes money by taking a cut on transactions, charging a 20% fee on sales, $15 or more, or a flat $2.95 for smaller sales. So taking a look at their website, they can do a lot better in terms of design, making it a lot more user friendly. Uh, but I do like the convenience of being able to pay with PayPal. That was a good addition onto the website. And I did mention that Postmark generated 193 million in revenue. Now, where's the money going? You say, well, Postmark has a history of spending heavily on marketing with the cost of television commercials and social media ads totaling 221 million during 2018 and 2019. I don't know if a lot of you use Instagram, but that's where a majority of their marketing is going on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, social media platforms there. And that does run up a lot of money. But as you can see, it has been successful for the company in driving in a lot of customers to that website. About two thirds of its revenue in the period was spent on marketing. And since then it has dialed back the spending during the pandemic, but warned investors that it plans to ramp it up again in the future. Now what turned me off with the company is the fact that Postmark is limited to selling clothing, shoes, and accessories within the US. But its competitor eBay is an international marketplace that gives you the potential for more sales as you can sell to people around the world. And it's only sitting at a roughly $55.40 with the market cap of $38 billion, a healthy price per earnings ratio, and they give dividends. Now Postmark in order for it to seriously compete with these, with the companies in its industry, it's going to have to find a way to encourage international sales, as well as find a way to be able to 
lower their costs on marketing, but but bringing the same results. So me as an investor, I am going to hold off before investing in Postmark. They do got a lot to work on. And currently uh, the hype of the IPO is driving the price of this company a little bit overvalued. I only hop into this company once they release availability to trade options for this company. Then yes, I'll go ahead and buy future calls once the price dips below to a reasonable price and they get a healthier looking balance sheet as you can see here look at here their current liabilities is sitting at 2 billion 2.7 billion dollars and their assets is only at 1.5 billion now what's important to me when investing into a company and looking at the balance sheet i pay close attention to the stockholders equity and it's not looking so well for the company yes they did just get listed on the market, but they have been around since 2011, so they've had more than enough time. It's just, I believe their spending is not quite there yet. And as you can see, if you don't know what shareholders equity is, it's the remaining amount of assets available to shareholders after all liabilities have been paid off. And it's currently negative a billion, it's currently negative $1.2 billion, so that's not attractive at the very moment so i will be waiting some time before further investing into postmark but if you want to go ahead and take your chance headache go right ahead of course they are an e-commerce so the potential is there for the company if you look at ebay ignoring the stock price here you can see in the past five years they're up 113 percent so i do see a recovery coming for postmark and as long as the e-commerce industry keeps performing significantly well postmark will go ahead and follow it but they're currently not my cup of tea. I would prefer sticking my money in something a little bit with something with a little bit more guarantee, like a firm here, which recently IPO'd with Postmark as well. So you go ahead and let me know what you think of the company. Let me know if you have invested some money into it. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like, subscribe, and comment. I'll go ahead and catch you guys on the next one. Yeah.